Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we are talking about the taper. If you've ever followed a formal training plan for a half marathon, full marathon, maybe even an ultra, you'll notice that the final few weeks lessen in mileage, lower in intensity, and really kind of pull you back a little bit so you are ready for race day. That's the taper, and that's what we are talking about today. Let's dive on in. So today we are talking about the taper and if you've been running races for a while you may know that you either love the taper or you hate the taper. You may enjoy the extra bit of recovery, the lower mileage, or it absolutely drives you crazy, right? So really the taper is just a reduction in exercise, whether that's mileage or intensity in the days and weeks leading up to race day. Now, rule of thumb is that the longer the race, the longer the taper. The shorter the race, the shorter the taper. So if you're doing something like a marathon, an ultra, you may, may be looking at a three-week taper. If you're doing a half marathon, you may be looking at a two to like one week taper. And if you're doing a 5K, 10K, you may be looking at like one week to a couple days worth of tapering. Now, what are we doing during this taper? Obviously, we're lessening our mileage, but what is the purpose of that, right? Because in my mind and in my thought process, especially when I first started running, the idea of pulling back my mileage, pulling back my intensity, kind of gave me anxiety. Like, um, I have been training for the last 10, 12, 14, 16 weeks for this race, and I don't want to blow it in the two, three weeks leading up to race day by losing all the fitness that I've been working for, right? Guys, that's just, it's not true, right? Yes, running is one of those things that if you don't use it, you lose it, right? But it takes a whole lot longer than two, three weeks for you to lose all of the hard work that you've been working for. And during your taper, it's not that you're not running, it's that you're just maintaining. You're maintaining all of the hard work that you've been doing over the course of your training plan. You are still going out and running usually just as many days as you were. If you were running four days a week during your plan, chances are during your taper, you're still running four days a week. However, we might be pulling back that mileage a little bit more and you might not have things like hill sprints or um, fartleks and things like that because you're pulling back those that intensity so you're rested. Now, just because you're resting doesn't mean that you don't need those shakeout runs to keep your body moving, keep that blood pumping, but in a way that's not gonna be adding a ton of stress on your body. So that way your glycogen levels can be at peak, your muscles can repair, your ligaments and your tendons and your joints and all the things that have taken a huge beating over the course of your training plan have time to repair and recover and come back stronger so you can perform your best on race day. Now, the thing that drives so many people crazy during that taper is that your body is used to this level of intensity. You've been building up for so long, your body has adjusted to this level of activity. And as you pull back, you might get a little antsy. It's okay. It's normal. It is very normal for you to get that antsiness. It's okay if your runs, maybe a run that would normally be super easy, for you during training might feel very sluggish, very tired, that's okay. Your body is doing what it needs to do to prepare for race day. Trust the process. Now, if you notice you got a whole bunch extra time, 
Use that time to sleep in. Use that time to give your body a little extra TLC, foam rolling, stretching, maybe go get a massage, maybe take an Epsom salt bath, uh, you know, chill out, watch some TV, read a book. Use that time to take care of you, lower your stress levels, and take care of your body. Another thing during this time is this is not the time to start experimenting, okay? By the time that you are tapering, you should already know what you are eating on race day and what you're eating the night before. You should know what shoes you are wearing for race day. You should know what clothing you are wearing for race day. The taper is not the time to be breaking in a new pair of shoes. It's not the time to be trying out new socks, um, new goos and chews. This is the time for you to stay consistent with the things that you've been doing during your training. And even though we are cutting back on our running, we also either want to cut back or cut out completely on our other cross training activities. I know it's hard. It is a hard, I get it. But during your taper is not the time to be doing some super intense strength training. This is the time to pull back and let your body recover, okay? So, you know, maybe in the first one to two weeks of your taper, if you're doing a longer three week taper, yes, maybe you can do some lighter exercises, but definitely the week or two leading up to your race, I would really cut back completely. Use that extra time to maybe do Pilates or yoga, something that's gonna have a little less impact on your body, but that doesn't mean that you have to be completely stationary. You can absolutely still move, stretch, walk, go for a light swim. Those things are still gonna keep your body moving, but still allowing you to rest completely. Also, during your taper, make sure that you're paying attention to your diet, okay? Because food is fuel and you wanna make sure that you are getting the best nutrition in your body, you're getting in the best fuel for you on race day. So make sure that you're paying attention to your diet pretty closely. The one to two weeks leading up to race day, it's gonna make a huge difference um, come your event. Okay, so that's really why the taper is so important. I know it's tempting to just get in a few final hard runs to, um, you know, want to push it just a little bit more because you're feeling good and you're excited for race day. Trust the process, hold back a little bit, and I promise that your body is going to thank you and you are going to see that little boost of energy on race day when you really take it back, let your body reach peak performance. All right, you guys, that's it for me today. Um, please, if you like my channel, like, subscribe, and if you want a little bit more of me, come join the team. It's a super supportive community where we do live runs, live workouts, and we have weekly group coaching calls where you can ask questions and get the support that you need to reach your goals. So that's it. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.